Thanks everyone for joining us today for GC's third annual Impact Update webinar. Um, we are glad to have you here and uh, we might have more people joining us as we go along, but let's get started. Just as an FYI, everybody is muted right now except for our uh, webinar facilitators. Uh, we would love though to hear your questions and comments as we go throughout the webinar today. We have time for discussion at the end, but at any point, feel free to use the chat function on your screen to type in questions to the chat box. And we'll either address those in real time or circle back during our allotted Q&A portion in the second half of the call. And with that, let me tell you what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we will be starting off with some introductions to the team, then talking through who Generation Citizen is and what we do before delving into our evaluation methods, what we're learning and seeing about our program in the past year specifically, our plans for looking ahead, and then we'd love to discuss with you all how things are going and address your questions. My name's Sarah Andes and I'm GC's Director of Programming. We're also joined today by Yasmin Makdavi, GC's Measurement and Evaluation Fellow, as well as Scott Warren, Generation Citizen's co-founder and CEO. And I'd love to uh, uh, invite him to get us started. So thanks everyone uh, for joining, really excited to, to have you. And just as a um, reminder, we're gonna be actually recording this as, as well. Um, so that'll be happening in re real time. So wanted to um, quickly go through just why we're doing this and, and the purpose of the briefing in general. Um, this is the third webinar that we're doing. And the way that we see our, our evaluation at GC um, is really thinking through uh, what we're doing well and and where we can improve uh, looking at our theory of change how we can continue to to improve how we're doing it engaging young people and becoming informed and active citizens um, and where we can be doing a better job uh, so it's important to emphasize that this isn't a red or green light this isn't generation citizen is working it's not generation citizen uh, is is not working but really meant to to be a reflection you'll see things throughout this, this webinar um, components that uh, that, that, that you know, we think that we're really excelling at in uh, parts of our program where we think we have a, a lot of room to, to, to grow. Um, and, and I will say this is the first webinar we've had uh, where we have a staff person uh, in, in Yasmin who's a fellow working with us who's specifically dedicated to evaluation. Uh, and this is part of the process for GC of really emphasizing a continued, uh, you know, dedication to ensuring that everything we do uh, is is backed up by evaluation and everything we do uh, is is constantly uh, being reflected upon and so um, we're excited that this is a part of that uh, and excited to take your questions throughout as well. So I wanted to quickly go through what we actually do for those of you that might be a little newer to GC. Um, so to actually walk through our, our programs, our mission um, is to ensure that every student in the U.S. receives an effective action civics education, um, and and the vision really is is young people working together collectively to to rebuild our our American democracy. It's important to note that we at Generation Citizen don't think that we could ever work with every young person uh, in in the country on on action civics. Uh, so we're trying to build demand for our work at the same time, which is one of the reasons why we feel that this evaluation is so important. Uh, because if we can figure out what's working and what's not working in our own program and our own curriculum, uh, hopefully we can we can work within the field to to get other organizations, other districts, other schools uh, to 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 look at similar type programming as well. I, I think it, it's just worth noting um, that that the need for action civics. We're not going to go into detail too much on it on this webinar, um, but you know it's it's now more than ever, um, and I think this this election writ large really highlighted it. Um, and you know, young people on the aggregate uh, are are not apathetic. I think that's a, a term that gets thrown out too much, but but don't necessarily see politics as the way to actually uh, affect change. Uh, and one metric of that is right now, uh, only twenty percent of young people actually trust the federal government to do the right thing. 
1973, a, uh, a similar survey showed that 64% uh, of, of young people uh, felt that, that the government would actually do the right thing. And, and there's a whole bunch of reasons that young people might not see politics as the best way to affect change. Uh, but one is that teaching civics is, is not a priority in schools. And when it is taught, it's, it's usually taught in, in a rote way where students just learn the three branches of government uh, and not how a bill becomes a law. So what Generation Citizen is trying to do um, is to try to get action civics to, 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 to civics to be in the classroom and to get it to be action oriented and relevant. Um, so I wanted to touch on what action civics is. This is a term that we that we use a lot. Um, and, you know, just as, as young people might learn science through doing engaged robotics activities or science experiments, or you might learn English by reading a book you love, we want students to learn civics by, by doing civics. Um, and so there's a chart here um, that, uh, that describes the process that we actually use when we go through GC. Um, students select uh, an issue that they care about, they examine that issue and, and figure out the root cause. Uh, they devise an actual plan to take action, uh, actually take some sort of action and then reflect on uh, what they actually what they actually learned. I um, wanted to, to quickly also talk through our theory of change. And um, what's important I think about this theory of change is uh, it really is focused on, on the young people that we work with. Um, I'll, I'll talk through in a second the, the various tiers of programming that we have. We work with college students and teachers to implement the program, um, but on the top right, you'll see um, you know, that, that it really is about every young person in this country developing the skills, knowledge, uh, and dispositions necessary to be active citizens. And you can see uh, below then it's about students receiving a high quality action civics education and there being greater demand. Uh, but I think the, the most important part of this theory of change is the, the, the focus on students, which we define as, as middle and high school students. There's a very explicit focus on that, um, which is why the evaluation that we're gonna talk through is, is very focused on, on students as well, despite the, the, the numerous uh, constituencies we, we, we work with. Um, so quickly touching on the programming that we actually engage in, um, the, the specific um, action civics programming models, our core program um, is one in which uh, democracy coaches, uh, is, which is what we call college volunteers, partner with middle and high school teachers to teach our in-school action civics curriculum. Um, this peer-to-near -peer, peer approach really gets young people in the classroom that are close in age to the middle and high school students and, and uh, can help them think through how to take action on local issues. We also have a teacher-led programming uh, which is for schools outside of the proximity of colleges where we train teachers to actually work on, on the program as well. We'll talk through both of these. Um, outside of the classroom, there's two specific things we're, we're doing. One is a fellowship for students uh, that go through our, our, our program. The, the sort of exceptional students are placed in stipended uh, summer internships with the offices uh, of local officials, local advocacy organizations, and they get training on the side from GC. We'll talk through that evaluation. Uh, and then as we alluded to before, demand building, um, which is work to, to really uh, build the field and build demand for, for action civics. Um, in classrooms uh, across the U.S. So that's that's GC um, in in a nutshell. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to Yasmin, who's going to start to talk through um, the actual programming that we that we engage in. Thank you, Scott. I want to hone in on our core and teacher-led programs, which will be the focus of this conversation. Last year, we partnered with 80 schools to serve more than 6,600 students across our four regions and we plan to empower over 9,000 students this academic year. Of these, the vast majority of our classrooms, 78% fall in our core DC-led model. And as Scott mentioned, all of our action civics programs share the same curriculum and intended outcomes. While we're operating within a new and developing field of evaluation, academic experts have identified three agreed upon indicators which best predict the likelihood of students' future civic engagement. These are the three metrics we use to assess our students' development. We show them here using a graphic from our students' handbooks as head, heart, and hands depicting civic knowledge, which is students' understanding of the basic governmental processes, structures, and players, civic motivation or disposition, which our students' desire to actively participate in the political process, 
and civic skills, which are students' ability to effectively interact with those processes, systems, and players. To assess our impact on students' development of these indicators, we utilize a range of evaluation tools. And as you see here, we, as you will see soon, we use classroom observations to offer immediate support to DCs, teachers, and classes, and to compile data on what's working best or stands to be improved upon in our classrooms for use in analysis long-term. We administer pre and post semester surveys to sample um, our students in order to gather information directly from students about their experiences. And we collect surveys in the middle and at the end of the semester from teachers and DCs to gather feedback from the program and to get another perspective on students' experiences in the classroom. We also engage external partners in supplementary efforts to evaluate our program. Efforts which have in the past included a quasi-experimental analysis of our program, as well as studies to assess the value of DCs in the classroom and the development of, of um, student civic skills. Many of these can be found on our website under our impact tab. In this presentation, we'll be focusing on information gathered primarily from our student and teacher surveys and to a lesser extent, DC surveys in the 2015-2016 school year. And I now hand over the presentation to Sarah, who's gonna to talk to you in better detail about our surveys and the results. Thanks, Yasmin. So before we get into this year's analysis, we wanna share an update of some changes we've made as a result of last year's evaluation and reflection. Our main evaluation priority heading into this year was to improve the quality and quantity of data we were exerting effort to collect by revising our student surveys. So we shortened them and removed qualitative short answer and fill in the blank responses, both to improve administration time and the turnaround time of our program analysis. We reviewed and updated the content of the questions to better align with our program goals, we also created a new section called Civic Action in order to collect information about student civic experiences before and as a result of our program. And we expanded the survey's program feedback section in order to learn more about students' reactions to not simply development because of GC. Lastly, we made some changes in order to improve our survey collection rates, de-identifying student information in order to avoid the weighty paperwork of parental consent forms, and taking personal responsibility for survey administration rather than relying upon teachers to implement surveys in classrooms themselves. What that led us to was collecting surveys from about 26% of our students across our four regions last year. The number of matched pre and post surveys completed by the same student, however, gave us a sample size of around 300 respondents. In our analysis, we, conduct, we calculated the results of each question within the set of matching surveys and within the full set of responses, and we didn't find substantive differences between the groups. Therefore, in our search for precision and better reliability, we'll be discussing our findings from matched responses in this presentation. Our surveyed population is generally representative of our survey of our student population at large. Finally, now what did we learn from the data? Let me walk you through our analysis by civic indicator. Teachers reported approximately three quarters or 72% of their students increased their civic knowledge, a number held fairly constant from the 69% of students teachers reported improving in civic knowledge in the previous academic year. Here's a sample civic knowledge question from student surveys, asking them to associate a local political structure with its correct branch of government. And here are a few highlights we gathered from this section in total. What we noticed is that students demonstrated the most growth from the beginning to end of semester on their understanding of the branches of government on a local scale. 
we actually built these new questions into this 2015-2016 uh, survey before rolling out expanded instruction on the local branches of government in a revised curriculum which we launched only this year. So we're excited to have a baseline from last year's program against which to measure students' growth on this year's surveys. The last bullet point here is also interesting because it represents the sole indicator from student surveys on which we saw student scores decrease, which is on their identification of a systemic level root cause of a community problem. And we suspect that this is probably a language question, and we've updated this to read community level root cause on this year's survey. We're eager to compare results and uh, make changes to continue to improve this indicator. According to teachers' perceptions, civic skill development was observed among 70% of their students, comparable to their estimation of 72% of students last year. As you can see from this example, student civic skill questions ask them to demonstrate their competence on a range of skills, including collaborating to solve a problem, leading people to care about a problem, making a public speech, and creating a plan to address an issue. Surveys revealed students' growth on all skill indicators, with the most gains in their ability to speak in public and the fewest in their capacity to collaborate with others. As you might deduce from the style of questioning, across the evaluation sphere, skill development is notoriously difficult to gather from surveys, as they're dependent on students' confidence and self-awareness of growth rather than actual demonstration of a skill. The discrepancy between results from student surveys and teachers' perceptions on this indicator suggests that growth is occurring in areas in which our survey is not adequately capturing the outcome. So for this reason, it's really important that we supplement our student survey analysis with other methods of assessment in order to better understand our true impact. And spoiler alert, knowing we'll be talking about next steps at the end of the presentation, uh, this will be a priority of ours in the year ahead. Teachers observe growth in the civic dispositions or civic mindsets of 68% of their students, an identical percentage as they reported last year. On student surveys, we measured this growth in two ways. First, by asking about students' agreement with certain civic-minded statements, and then inquiring about students' likelihood of participating in certain civic activities in the future. When we revised this section of the survey for uh, last year's programming, we edited, this, we edited this section to include students' affinity towards behaviors of general civic engagement, like volunteering or following the news, as well as more political engagement, such as contacting public officials or running for office. And I think it's really interesting to note that students' positivity grew most markedly on measures of political engagement. For example, Although students didn't show major gains for future, future general volunteering activities, only a 3% increase over the course of the program, we noted an 11% increase in their interest in volunteering for a political campaign. This is consistent with the emphasis of GC's curriculum and the positive sign in our books. It's also interesting to note, and not shown on the slide here, that students pre-surveys revealed that 95% of them believed they were likely to go to college. At the same time, only 78% of students, in comparison, believed it likely that they would vote in the future. This differential is really striking and speaks to us of the extent of the college and career readiness focus pervading the educational climate for the past many years. Students are growing up well-groomed in the belief that college is important and something to aspire to, Fewer, however, are cultivated to place the same importance on voting. A testament to the importance of our work, perhaps. And I'm excited to share with you results from our civic action section. As I mentioned, uh, we added this new section to the surveys last year in order to collect information on students' experience actually engaging in civic action. Here you can see the structure of this style of questioning. 
I want to first acknowledge that we suspect that the language of this spec section was confusing and we plan to simplify the directions for students moving forward. Drawing what conclusions we can, however, we saw marked growth in students' actual demonstration of civic behaviors over the course of the program. Notably, a 152% increase in the percentage of students who had ever contacted or met with an elected official, and a 74% increase in the percentage of students who had ever written an article, op-ed, or letter to the editor of a newspaper, magazine, or blog. This status suggests that GC presents a valuable opportunity to build students' familiarity with, and in doing so, breaking down potential fear towards engaging in new civic behaviors. And we aim to better support democracy coaches and teachers in taking advantage of this opportunity moving forward. In general, we received positive feedback on surveys from all of our program recipients and partners, from students to teachers to our DCs, our democracy coaches. And though we've made the strategic decision to focus our evaluation, like Scott mentioned, and resources as well, on measuring students' growth, we did learn from DC's surveys last year that 95% of them noted that the experience positively impacted them by allowing them to work collaboratively with diverse individuals and by improving their communication skills. Before we get too hung up on quantitative outcomes, however, I want to expand our scope by considering how these outcomes are generated and what our students' learning actually looks like in action. And I'd love to do that through the lens of the classroom story. Last fall in Providence, Rhode Island, a class of middle school students articulated their concern about the lack of support available in their school to students who are English language learners, an issue with personal significance for a number of students in the class. When students read a report from the Roger Williams Latino Policy Institute and met with the Institute's director, they learned that Rhode Island has a significant gap in the achievement levels of white and Latino students and they decided to advocate to expand ELL certification for teachers so that schools could be better equipped to support English, English language learners. The class met with State Senator Juan Pachardo, the director of the school department's English language learners department, and Superintendent Mayer, who invited them to present their project to the Providence School Board. After their presentation, the school board agreed to support the students by making ELL certification more accessible for teachers working with the English language learners and move toward accessibility that they have acted upon this school year. So beyond the surveys, uh, this is what we're seeing uh, kind of translated into action or rather their action then translated into this quantitative data that we're trying to collect and analyze to improve our program. So we know that that's a lot of information and a lot of data. Let me try to sum it up. According to teachers' perceptions and student surveys, GC students are demonstrating improvement across all categories of civic indicators. We saw the most growth in students' understanding of local government and their confidence in and eagerness to engage with elected officials and to make their voices heard through hosting meetings, writing articles, or running for office. These increases are commendable and exactly aligned with our objectives as a program, and we're eager to continue on this positive trajectory. It's also clear from surveys of students' experiences that part of GC's added value is young people's exposure to new civic action. As we reflect on the positive points of the data, it's also interesting to note a significant area for growth. Though students are making gains across the spectrum of survey questions, there are few indicators which reveal near universal correctness, positivity, or confidence at the end of the semester, as gauged by more than 85% of that correctness, positivity, or confidence on post-semester surveys. So we're seeing gains, but we're largely not seeing drastic gains, which leaves us ample room for prioritization and for growth to ensure that positive outcomes are being enjoyed more deeply and more consistently by all of our student participants. We touched previously on our interest in rounding out our understanding of student civic skill and dispositions development with supplemental forms of analysis. And it's clear to us that removing the need to collect parental consent forms did not ease all difficulties associated with the data collection process. 
and we have to keep strengthening our systemization, systematization excuse me, of survey administration, data tracking, and data analysis in order to bolster our evaluation efforts moving forward. As efforts to evaluate our current academic year's programs are already underway, we've actually already taken several steps to address some of the challenges that we've just outlined. So we've already rolled out this year a revised curriculum, which has been updated to enhance its alignment with our program outcomes, which we hypothesize will offer us really interesting results to consider on student surveys from the current 2016-2017 school year. We've also rewritten our mid-semester surveys for DCs and teachers and are in the process of editing our end-of-semester surveys to minimize DCs and teachers survey fatigue and to hopefully enhance the utility of the feedback that we're collecting from our partners, both for immediate use and support and for long-term analysis and use. We've also already developed a new survey administration and tracking protocol, which we'll be piloting this spring that we think will help us better monitor the immense amounts of data that we're taking in and intending to analyze from our partners. Next on our list includes intentions to strengthen the evidence li linking our civic outcomes of focus with real long-term impact, whether that's through a longitudinal study or other methods. We want to explore new ways, as mentioned, to assess student civic skill and disposition development. We wanna refine the language of our student surveys to enhance our support of student civic experiences throughout the course of the program, and to continue to improve the GC student experience. And part of the way we'll be doing this is by sharing student-created materials, which, which students have designed to help democracy coaches strengthen their relationship with students and uh, help them make their classes a little special and safe for all of the discussion going on throughout our program. Further on the horizon, we're also interested in auditing and upgrading our classroom observation systems, diving into a study of the diversity, quality, and impact of our DCs in the program, and exploring GC's influence on school climate and, and culture. So just to, just to, to close it out, and, and before I, I, I do so, um, please do start to use the group chat function if you have any questions. We just, we just have a few moments left and I'm seeing uh, the questions, some good ones starting to, to roll in. So if you do have any, um, please, please put them in the, the chat function right now. Um, I just wanted to first commend Sarah and Yasmin on the, on the really great work that they've done here. I think um, you know, what, what we're taking away from this, just distilling what, what, what Sarah said a little bit more, uh, is that on essentially every single indicator, um, Sarah noted literally the one question where we, we didn't see improvement. On literally every single indicator, we are seeing improvement um, from the beginning of the semester until the end of the semester. And so we see the fact that, and, and this is, you know, we've looked at a lot of um, nonprofits evaluation results. Um, that is not necessarily a given. Uh, and, and especially on the skill side of things, Sarah, Sarah talked about that, but a lot of times students will have inflated senses of skills at the beginning of the semester. The fact that there's improvement across the board um, is something that we're proud of uh, and something that I think is, is positive for, for the future. So literally, um, except for one question, um, across the board on civic knowledge, skills, and motivation, we are seeing improvements. At the same time, uh, there's, there's always room for, for improvement. And so I think Sarah noted a lot of that um, but, um, you know, we, we, we will continue to monitor that. The other thing that I'll, I'll say, we will send around uh, the comprehensive impact report at the end of this call. Um, we, we really focused this time on surveys. And surveys are, you know, an important way of, of assessing results. Uh, but there's a lot of other uh, different ways that, that we're looking at. Sarah mentioned that, that one class project at the end. Um, but, you know, as, as, as these are mostly student self-reported surveys, we want to make sure that we're doing a comprehensive uh, analysis of what's working and what's not. The impact reports also look at our, our community change fellowship, our demand building work, uh, and whether we're seeing results there as well. Um, this last slide, we, we just wanted to, to also emphasize um, really trying to make sure as an organization um, that we are putting our, our students front and center, not just in uh, the work that we do in, in the classroom, but 
uh, in advising us on how we can be better. Um, and so we formed a, a student leadership board. This is from their retreat this, this summer. Uh, and this quote is um, from, uh, from, from Lexi in, in the Bay Area, who is at the, the front set, or the, the third of the, the five girls at the, at the front. Um, and so I think this is, this is sort of the, the, why we, um, the why we do what we, um, the, the, the why we do what we do. Um, so, so with that, I um, wanted to, to turn it over to questions. We have um, a few coming in already, and, and, and Sarah and I will handle them. Um, but please keep them, um, uh, please keep them coming. So the first one um, is uh, from Larry Schooler, our, our uh, Central Texas board chair, uh, asking how can, uh, can we survey students a few years out from the GC experience? Um, so I'll turn that over to, to Sarah and Yasmin. Thanks, Scott, and great question, Larry. Thanks for asking this. Um, so this was actually one of our leading priorities to think about this longitudinal surveying process as we went into this uh, school year and started to develop a project. We started this project um, by interviewing uh, nearly a dozen other organizations who are starting to uh, who we know to be thinking about this longitudinal evaluation. Um, the majority of whom surprisingly recommended that we try to get this information in other ways um, for the time being beyond a strict uh, longitudinal, like send along a survey um, because of the difficulty of getting results which you can uh, lean on reliably and also the expense and the capacity needed to do so. So uh, the, the priorities were, we're working with an external group of consultants from Glass Frog Solution based in Princeton, New Jersey, who Yasmin mentioned had worked with us on other external evaluation projects in the past. The priorities that we're gonna start with as we consider this longitudinal um, evaluation aspect of our program are, um, one, building students' uh, relationship with Generation Citizen as an organization so that when we do attempt to contact them uh, and develop more alumni programming for them in the future, there's a greater likelihood that we'll have a relationship to fall back on to support their participation. Um, and then two, we're going to be organizing focus groups of students over the next six months to help us think about um, if we were to do longitudinal evaluation, um, we want to ask questions about the areas of our greatest impact and we want to hear from students ourselves as we design those questions those questions, what those areas of impact are, um, and then of course how we could incentivize students participation, etc. So this is definitely on, uh, on the horizon for us, uh, and we're just talking with others across the field and trying to figure out uh, the best ways to take steps to making that happen. Great, so I, I think, you know, as, as Sarah said, this is a process that the longitudinal evaluation is something that we take seriously. It's something that's challenging. It's something that not a lot of groups are doing well. And it's something that we need to make sure that students uh, recognize that, um, that, that there's some sort of um, attachment to Generation Citizen. They're not necessarily going to stay in touch with us unless they feel an allegiance to the organization. And so that's one of the things that, that, that we have to, to build up. Uh, second question is, is, what do we know about the students who did not say it was very good or excellent? Do we have any anecdotal uh, responses from from why they said that that was the case and, and I, I expand that to DCs as well yeah so if I can actually I one more thing I wanted to add about the longitudinal piece um, one of our national board members is the director of circle which is an institute at Tufts University um, the premier academic institution focused it's called the Center for information research on civic learning and engagement um, and we've had a lot of conversations about potential longitudinal indicators one of the difficulties um, for the field at large is that uh, there are not so many agreed upon quality quantitative measures of civic engagement beyond voting rates. And voting rates is a really important one, but programs like ours and like those interested in supporting student civic engagement at writ large um, are also interested in their rates of participation on a local community level. Um, so that's kind of a, a reckoning that the field is going through uh, in total. Sorry, so Larry's question was about students or teachers who didn't report it was a very good or excellent program. What did they say? Great question. Um, so interestingly, 
over 95% of our teachers actually reported uh, a satisfactory, very good, or excellent uh, relationship with the program or experience with the program. We just reported here on very good or excellent. Uh, so the good news is that they're by and large very satisfied. Um, the ones who didn't demonstrate uh, that satisfaction, uh, we get a lot of great feedback from them, from sometimes uh, difficult relationships with some of the college volunteers that they're working with in the classroom, or um, lack of clear expectations for what a generation citizen and what, uh, what a generation citizen class looks like at the beginning of the semester, or challenges with the pacing and sequence of the program. Um, and it's a lot of that feedback uh, that actually helped us make some curricular revisions uh, as we went into this school year. So we're excited to, again, um, reach out to all of our teachers and figure out how we can better support them moving forward. Um, in terms of student satisfaction, so this was the first year we actually asked students about their uh, interest in recommending the program to a peer. We also ask about, um, for students in classes with democracy coaches, their relationships with the democracy coaches. Were your democracy coaches uh, respectful all of the time or most of the time or none of the above? And then did you enjoy working with them? Um, all of the time, most of the time, none of the above. Interestingly, they, um, the vast majority, over 80% reported that democracy coaches were respectful and polite in the classroom, but a few lower rates of actually enjoying working with them, which is one of the reasons why we're thinking about how to uh, improve our democracy coach training to uh, help strengthen uh, the skills of democracy coaches and building relationships with their students and really making their classrooms uh, a special place different from the work that they're doing the other days of the week in the program. So we take another question. If, if folks have more questions, again, um, feel free to, to put them in the, in the, in the chat function here. Um, Julie Hubbard from the National Board, a technical question uh, about uh, whether we've tried classroom or school controls and, and whether the variance comes from that. I'll, I'll start uh, by saying we have in the past tried some quasi-experimental evaluation where we um, uh, assume that students that are getting surveyed at the beginning of the semester at one school uh, and the end of the semester at another school, if we're randomly selecting the schools that we work with, um, there could be uh, a quasi-randomized approach to that. We, we have not done that with, with this set of information. Um, and so I think this is an area where, um, you know, our schools are, as Sarah said at the beginning, the demographics are relatively similar, but um, I do think that there's more that we can do to actually control for, for some of the variables. And that's probably a next level of analysis that, um, that would be important and interesting to do in the future. Sarah, do you have any, anything more to add to that? Yeah, I would say um, the sample that we've done uh, last year and that we're participating in this year is a clustered probability sample where we're clustering classrooms by our site and then randomly selecting classrooms to survey within those. Um, because we redesigned our student surveys and the administration and data collection process last year, uh, and then we're waiting to analyze last year's results in order to make future changes, so we're using the same surveys and the same processes this year, um, we wanted that to get the majority of our attention and energy. Um, and at the end of the year, we will be sitting down again with Glass Frog to take a look at um, the past two years' uh, like responses, uh, making sure that they're representative of our student population at large, and considering if we need to build in some weighted probabilities um, to account for changes between sites or um, working with perhaps uh, getting a higher sample from middle school classes than is warranted in our general population, et cetera. So we'd love to do some uh, of that more detailed and advanced analysis. And now that we've got our sea legs under us with these revised surveys, um, which we'll be editing, you know, only slightly moving forward, I think we're in a good place to do that uh, for the next school year. So again, if there's any, if there's any last questions, uh, feel free to put them in, in the group chat. One, one sort of follow-up to that question that I'll, I'll sort of pose on my own is that a lot of times we get questions on why don't you serve, uh, I mean, why don't you survey every, every student that you work with? 
um, working with, uh, you know, about 7,000 this year, you get a better, um, a better sample size. And I mean, there are, there are members of the, the team on this call as well. And I think we found, as Sarah said, that it's logistically challenging um, to make sure that everybody gets it. And we do want to make sure um, that, that we have a representative sample. We don't feel like we have to survey everyone to get that representative sample and to get a statistically significant um, size. I will say uh, at some point, and, and this might be in the near future, although you know, they're, they're relatively costly. Um, it would be good to do a, a randomized control trial um, to actually look at this stuff in, in a little bit more detail so it's not just pre-post test um, and it's, it's more comprehensive. Those are costly. Um, and I think, you know, those, those are a little bit more red light, green light. Um, and so we want to be, you know, more confident of, of, of where we are. I think we always, we continue to get a little bit more confident. Um, we, we try to be very honest uh, about, um, about what we're seeing. Uh, but that's something that, that, you know, it might make sense to do in the, in the near future. And to kind of underscore all of those points, um, we're really focused right now on our evaluation offering us valuable information to improve the program. So um, a lot of this more advanced analysis and data aggregation will come into play much more when we start thinking about the you know, uh, assembling data for the purpose of sharing externally or for the purpose of uh, publishing in academic papers, et cetera. Um, really, our first priority now is getting information from students, from teachers, and democracy coaches so that we can uh, improve the efficacy of the work that we're doing and the work that so many of you are supporting, which we really appreciate. So give it. One more second for, for, for last questions that, that people want to want to put in. Um, but I think to summarize all of this again, you know, we're um, excited by the results that, 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 that we're starting to or continuing to see um, on, on the indicators that we're measuring. One other sort of a side note on this is that a lot of times we get questions on, well, you know, what about college graduation rates or, um, you know, what about uh, literacy rates or, or test scores really try to focus on what we think we can be responsible for um, and what we are trying to be responsible for is civic knowledge civic skills and civic motivation which we we think especially in this current day and age uh, are very important um, and things that we can have some sort of say over and so there might be times in the future where we would have some sort of intrinsic benefit on those other indicators um, you know if you want a program that's about trying to get more kids to graduate from high school and go to college, uh, maybe Generation Citizen will help, but it's not going to be the first program that you go to, and we're good with that. Um, so I think that's something that we've, we've tried to be more intellectually honest about going forward. I think sometimes there can be pressure from, um, from funders to, to focus on specific things, and, and we've tried to, to really be clear on, on, on what we feel like we should be responsible for, which is, which is uh, these results. Um, but would encourage everyone to, to really read the impact reports um, comprehensively, we're proud of the nuanced, uh, intellectually honest way that we're looking at this evaluation in an iterative way and, and do think that we're seeing um, some improvements, not some, we're seeing improvements across the board, um, which, which, which is obviously a positive, uh, and there'll be ways that, that we continue to, to, to try to improve going forward. Um, any last thoughts from your end, Sarah? Nope, that's it for me, unless anyone has any other questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Yep, so we'll send out the impact report. Please let us know if you have any other questions, and we really appreciate you taking the time.